okay. Oh. Every time I do that and then I go to start it again and then I just do it. Okay, whatever. Wait, wait. That was very on brand. Um, <laughs> welcome. I've been promising a Q&A video for a while, um, so I'm gonna finally do that today. Um, my name's Zoe Thorogood. I work in the comic industry. I have done for about three years now. Um, what I'm probably best known for is, is this, my child, um, The Impending Blindness of Billy Scott, which was released last October? Probably? Um, I get a lot of questions from from young artists and people looking at, to get into the industry about you know how you do that. Um, and so I thought the best thing to do would be to compile a list of questions and answer them all in a video. Um, like I remember when I was starting out in comics I was about 19 and information was very hard to come by and you kind of had to learn from people that were in the industry and it's fairly fast moving so I feel like as a newbie I can dispense my questionable wisdom onto the masses so you're welcome. Okay so the most frequently asked question I got by far was uh, tips on getting into the comic industry and also how to publish a graphic novel. So this is a very broad question, um, and I'm going to try my best to to answer it in a way that's, that's actually helpful rather than just kind of explaining what I did. Um, but what I did was um, I, I was in my last year of uni and um, I was supposed to be going into video games and video game art and concept art and stuff, but I really wanted to make comics. So I spent pretty much all of my time developing pitches for comics. Um, and posting them online so I would you know like I would I would come up with these ideas I would make these covers and then I would post them and I would post like a little like a little snippet about them so like I'm gonna just keep calling back to Billy as my example because I mean she's here she's a book um, the proof is in the book and um, so what I did was I would like post like I had a draft for the cover and I would like be like, oh, I'm working on this this pitch for a graphic novel. It's about this artist who starts going blind, blah, 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 blah. And um, eventually kind of people shared it enough that I would get like editors approaching me and being like, oh, we're really intrigued about your book. Um, tell us more. And that opened so many doors for me and eventually landed me a publisher, uh, which is how I went about it. And it's how I would recommend people who don't have like a name in the industry or whatever to, to, to go about it because like social media is such a powerful tool. I hate social media. Um, I know a lot of people do, but it's so important, especially Twitter. If you learn anything from this video, um, I get Twitter. If you wanna get into comics, get Twitter. It, it can be a cursed website, um, but it's so helpful. And I wouldn't have a career without it, like at all. Um, so kind of my, my recommendation of what you should do, whether you're wanting in as like, an artist or as you know a colorist a writer artist like whatever you whatever you want to be um get a twitter um throw your work into the void and keep doing it until somebody listens like if you throw it at enough people somebody will take note and it might take a while like it took me i was like it took me a while to get anywhere like i think it took me like a good two years to like get up to 500 followers and nobody like i had like two people who worked in the common industry that followed me so it was like it takes a long time um, but I noticed that once I started kind of talking about my projects like more in depth and kind of being like really passionate about it and showing like what I had to offer, um, people took more note. Um, so yeah, that was how I did it. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's multiple other ways, but this was the easiest for me. Okay. Um, another big one was um, how often does rejection occur when getting into the comic industry? all the time. Um, <laughs> I have had so many rejections in my short time in this industry. Um, so many comics that will never see the light of day. Um, it, it's something that happens a lot. I have found it happens less so now that I like have proof of what I can do. Like that's, that's the thing. I think the first thing that you do is always going to be the hardest because you have to prove to people when you have nothing. You're no name, you want no work, but you're like throw money at me or whatever. Um, and um, you know it's hard to get people's trust that first time so yeah like when you when you're first getting into the industry one thing that you have to be is like just numb to rejection 
like just absolutely none to it like people are going to shut you down people are going to ignore you pretend you don't exist and that's just how business is because at the end of the day everybody's trying to make money and unfortunately that means like people's people's fees, fees, fees get hurt you know like my fee fees got hurt a lot um and then i got over it <laughs> and now i'm like i'm pretty good with rejection now she says <laughs> um so yeah like it happens a lot and you have to get used to it um and just kind of trusting your ideas like for example okay with billy i pitched it to like i had like about five publishers approach me after seeing it on twitter um and be like hey can you tell us more about this and i can send a pitch whatever only one of them said yes um which was avery hill thank you <laughs> um but like everyone everyone else like and even they seemed so hype about it from like what they'd seen online or whatever and like some of them we got pretty far into like talking about contracts and stuff and then immediately they're like actually nah not for us anymore bye um and some people, like, some people straight up said that, like, it was boring or, like, um, had no appeal or, like, whatever, whatever. Um, and you just have to trust in your own vision because, you know, uh, people, people are not going to see, especially when it's, like, a pitch document, like, people aren't going to see your vision and you have to prove it to them. Um, but, yeah, rejection's part of it and you just need to find people who believe in you because they are out there. That was very, that was very heartwarming, sorry. <laughs> um, oh, God, can I stop? No, I can't is the answer. Um, any advice on creating pitches was another big one. Um, pitches are so important. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, graphic like if you want to make a graphic novel, you have to put together like a pitch packet, um, which consists of like for me at least. I don't. I feel like there's probably a general rule, but this is the Zoe Thorogood rule. Um, so take this with a pinch of salt. Um, but this is what I do. Um, so you want to start off with your cover. You want to have like, so with Billy, like this was the cover from the start. So like my my pitch for Billy had this as like the front page, had the title, um, like, and I feel like um, this is a bit of a tangent, but like with pictures and with comics in general and like any kind of media actually is. It, do you mind? I'm trying to dispense my wisdom. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, it's really important to have like a title and a cover that really grabs you because it's the first thing that the editor will see this editor Will have like a hundred other pictures they have to look through on that day, right? So you have to do something that really stands out and the easiest way to do that is with an interesting cover and title um, And I think like like the impending lines that Billy's got I'm so happy with that title It tells you all it's about in like one sentence and I think it's pretty successful I've had like People say that they read it, like they saw the title and were like, okay, instant pickup. Don't know what this is or who this, this kid is that made this, but like instant pickup. Um, so I think that's really important. Anyway, so you have the cover. Next page is your kind of like your elevator pitch. So you want to describe the story or like why, you know, like yeah, describe the story, describe what it's about in as like as few sentences as possible to like really hook someone in. So like my one for Billy was, um, Billy Scott is an artist. Her first gallery ex exhibition is in two months. Within two weeks, she'll be blind or something like that. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But something like that. And then the next paragraph would be kind of like a longer... Um, I think it was more like, with me, what I like to do is I like to explain to the person who's reading it why I want to make it. So with Billy, for example, I wanted to kind of put my feelings about creativity and social anxiety and kind of you know art and why it's important to me in in a, in a book and um, that was kind of like you know that's important to me and I think that's important to, to, to the person who's going to read it as well like I think if you can sell an idea but also sell yourself as a creator and like why you want to make it and like kind of make them be like oh yeah this this person's really passionate about this project because and I think that's really helpful um, and then um, what I did was it was like pages of interior art like I leave kind of like because obviously you want to do like a big you know like a few pages doc of like the the story in depth but I leave that until the end because it's the most boring part for them to look look at so after like my my log line and my like groveling um, I have like the page of interior art that I do so for like a standard pitch I think it's six pages but it differs publisher to publisher but i think like the standard is six i try and get away with as few as possible because i'm an absolute menace um 
but yeah, I think the standard is six. I do like three, and then I sometimes get told off um, and have to do, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so then, yeah, I have like my page of interior art because you need to, you need to obviously show that you can tell a story with pictures. Like comics isn't like writing a novel. Um, and then after that, you'll have like your few pages of this is the story in depth. This character does this, and then blah 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 blah, blah you know, and that's the pitch. And then I always end it with a nice thank you for reading. Hope you see the potential. You know, <laughs> and that works for me. So um, that's the story pitching pro pro process. Um, I thought this one was quite interesting. Any tips of how to develop a simple idea into something resembling a plot? So, I mean, it obviously depends on why, on who you are and why you're telling stories in the first place. With me, my stories tend to start with a, like <laughs> a personal feeling, right? Like with Billy, kind of my feeling was, well, what happened was I went to the opticians and they were like, hi, you might be going blind. And I was like, fuck, that's bad. Um, but then I was like, such a good story and that's kind of where it spawned um so kind of this fear of losing the one thing that i felt gave me self-worth and then i started thinking about like what would i do if suddenly i lost the only thing that i really have and you know my i'm this lonely isolated person oh god what do i do and then i you know kind of put those feelings into a character and this story spawned from it um and i think most of my stories kind of start from that like me feeling bad <laughs> and then like have to put it in something um but if you make art for less selfish reasons um i don't know i don't know i don't know how to answer but I, this is what i do i kind of if it's i need to get something off my chest or i need to convey something um then that's kind of how i go about it um is it best to practice art till you feel super confident or just start the damn comic Listen to me. Listen to me. Start the damn comic, okay? Your art is never gonna be perfect. Your art will always be shit in your eyes, okay? Make your stuff and throw it into the void, please. I'm telling you now, start it. <laughs> like, you'll never be ready. Nobody's ever ready. I'm not ready and I'm, I'm a prof professional artist apparently um and fuck right <laughs> i don't know i don't know how best to like i'm very passionate about this with billy if i didn't do it and i didn't like there are parts of this that i hate there are some panels in this that are disgustingly drawn there are some parts of the story that i hate and i'm like that's so cringe i read it and i'm like that's embarrassing but at the end of the day i have a book that i made my self is 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 kind of immortalized as this object and you know i did it i told a story and it's out there and that is so much more important than everything you do being perfect because at the end of the day nobody cares and there's always going to be people that hate it and you're always going to hate it so just start the dumb comic Okay, next one. Sorry if that got a little bit impassioned. Um, <sighs> what do you do if you have artist burnout? You can't take a break from artists, it's your job, it seems scary. Yeah, it sucks. Um, you have art block, your life falls apart and you can't work for weeks, and you have a deadline coming up, but all you can do is cry and watch reruns of Peep Show, and this is not from personal experience. Um, art block, it sucks. Um, and yeah, it, it hits you as a professional artist who has deadlines and can't do anything about them and has to make art. Um, my way of handling it is... So it, it depends, it depends... This is actually more of a complex question than I thought. Um, if it's something like a work for hire project that like I'm just like working as the artist for and I have a script, um, I treat it like it's a desk job or like, like before I worked in comics, I worked on a farm and all I had to do was stand at the end of a conveyor and put eggs into boxes. And I treat it like that. I have a script, I have a pen. I take the script and I put it on the paper. And it, it, it kind of does create pages that maybe are a bit lackluster, um, but at the end of the day, it gets the job done. And like, especially with comics, like, man, like a page will take you six hours and somebody will look at it for 10 seconds, right? Um, so. Most people don't care if the limbs you draw are too long. Some people do. 
looking at you, that one reviewer. Um, so, but yeah, um, I treat it just kind of like a, 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 you know, a job that I have to do and maybe it's boring, but whatever it happens. Um, if it's my own stuff, like if it's like my own projects, um, I don't tend to get art block with my own stuff because I always, but it, I think it's because I'm always reminding myself of why I want to make it in the first place. Um, so it's like, uh, if you're making something that you were once really like, you felt really strongly about, but now you're kind of kind of in this place where it's like you work never too long and you don't really care anymore. Um, just try and remind yourself like why, why you're making it in the first place, right? So it might be because like, you, you have something to say or you have this story that you really like or you have to put your feelings about your ex into something without telling them, right? could be whatever um and just like kind of think like why you're motivated to start in the, in the first place that was me at least i don't know if that wasn't very helpful whatever whatever uh, can you be a successful comic artist without marketing through social media no you can't you can't unless you are like a massive name who doesn't need a social media and like everyone just knows who you are um you need social media like i said at the start um Twitter is the best, I think, for this. Um, kind of, I've got most of my job opportunities through Twitter. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Like I, like I know it sucks, and it's like you're an artist. Like we all have social anxiety. We all hate social media. We have to use it. It's just like one of those annoying things. But it, it can, it's, it can be a great networking tool, and it can be a great tool for making friends. And you know, just as long as you don't spend too long on it. Like I, I don't really scroll social media. I just kind of, I my social media is very like it's all about me baby it's my world and you're all living in it like i don't really i don't i'm not much of a scroller and i wouldn't recommend being a scroller um but yeah you need social media you don't have to be like a social media person you know what i mean like you don't have to be like a a personality but like just having one and being having a space where you can throw stuff up that people can see for free and that's just it's just it's a no-brainer it's a no-brainer really um, why are you so productive any tips um constantly being reminded of my own mortality and wish for i don't know i just guess i just really like drawing <laughs> i'm in all seriousness i don't really have any tips on this because i just i like i don't know i i i need to make stuff i if i couldn't make stuff i would be dead in all seriousness like i i need to i need like an outlet and i need a creative outlet to put but things um so i don't know i i feel like if you need a tip on being productive you're not doing what you really want to do put that on a t-shirt uh, the idea of drawing comics traditionally seems so scary what if you mess up how do you deal i just deal with it really easily by just not caring um i think the, the beautiful thing about art like one of the beautiful things about art that is often seen as like a a negative is how imperfect it is like art is so inherently human that mistakes are going to happen and mistakes happen all the time like it's just it's part of it and i think that that's kind of a beautiful thing um i like i don't know i i like i've been using um these pens g pens and ink recently and if you move it slightly wrong you get like ink splatters everywhere and it's tragic and everyone cries but it's fun i love it i love using this i would never trade it for anything and sometimes yeah like you throw ink everywhere and you cry and you get sad and you're like why did i do that why can i just draw this digitally but then you're reminded of the little scritch scritch noise it makes on the paper and then everything's fine again so <laughs> i don't know the thing is it's like as well as like with mistakes in art nobody except annoying people are really going to care right so it's like I make mistakes a lot in drawing all the time and like sometimes you'll get like a reviewer that's like mm, ooh, the, that chin is a bit pointy and it's like sure but like did it did it take away this is my this is my rule if a mistake is so bad that it takes away from what you're trying to convey then it's a mistake worth fixing if it doesn't move on move on continue there's more pages to be drawn you have a deadline um do you manage social life healthy food and shit in addition to comics no um i do i well i i love like actually i eat pretty well at the moment 
I uh, I love cooking. Like cooking is one of my things that I like. That's my outside of comics and work time things that I love. Social life, dude. I'm an artist. I make comics. Even if I wasn't making comics, I wouldn't have a social life. So I'm probably not the best to like answer this question. But I think most people who work in comics don't really don't really have a social life. And I think that we pretend it's because we work so much, but actually it's because we're terrified. Um, is there a preferred way artists like the scripts, or is there a preferred format for scripts? It depends, um, person to person. So if you're like thinking of reaching out to an artist, um, as a writer, um, you just ask. Um, I personally, if I'm working with a writer, I like everything to be really laid out. So I like it to be like panel one. This happens. This character's thinking this. This is the dialogue is this. And like I like it to be all there um, because it's like. I want to make sure there's no miscommunication. I think if it's like, if it was a vaguer, um, I mean, it, it depends on the project, obviously, but like, if it's, yeah, like I feel like there's, there's room for error um, if it's kind of less in depth. So like, you know, it, yeah, whatever. That was a really shit answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, how many hours must you put in for a single comic page? Oh boy. Sometimes it gets stupid. Um, I mean, I try like, I would say the average takes about five or six hours for me, but then it can, it can go a little bit silly. Like I have spent like 12 hours on a page before and then been like, was that worth it? Yes, because I had fun. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the answer. But, um, yeah, it, it totally depends. Um, I try to not go too mental with it. It's like, I think that like, if you start going into like silly numbers, um, you're probably putting too much into it. Like I remember when I first got started in the comic industry, well, I, when I was trying to get into the comic industry and um, a professional artist went through my portfolio and she was like, you could do 50% of whatever this is. Like you can, you can do 50% and this will still be passable. And I think that's like such good advice that I, I did take very quickly in that like you, you know, you don't need to be putting all that time and effort into something that somebody's going to look at for three seconds, right? Like when it's good enough, it's good enough. Um, what are the steps of comic creation and your progress, progress, process from concept to end product? Um, so you want to start off with an idea, obviously, um, which then you develop by yourself or with a, you know, creative partner or whatever. Um, and then you want to take that into a pitch, which is obviously you selling it to a publisher and explaining why it's amazing, why everyone's going to buy it and you're going to make everybody loads of money. Um, and then once you've got the yes, what I do is, um, I can show you, I can show you what I do, I have my thing. Hello. Um, I left the light on. Oh. That wasn't a bit. Um, okay, so I'm so off it. What the fuck? Um, okay, so what I do is so once I've got the okay that I want to like, I'm okay to start the comic. I don't write scripts because um, you know most like I, I, you're gonna draw my own stuff. I don't need a script. Um, so what I do is. I, this is, this is, this is Billy, if, um, if Billy looked like this. Um, each page in this notebook corresponds to a page of Billy, and what I did was I basically wrote, um, what needed to happen on each page, and there's, like, little doodles if necessary, but, like, it's mostly just, like, scribbles, um, reminding myself of, like, this dialogue needs to be here, or this could be here, and then I went through the whole thing again and kind of, like, you know, added stuff. Um, and then what I did after I did this is I got my a million sheets of paper and started penciling um, the, the layouts, which I then, so they were like stickmen essentially, um, but it was like the whole book in stickman form with uh, the dialogue on it, um, which I then sent to my editor who had to look through the whole 200 pages of stick men talking to each other um and then we had some back and forth about like this needs to be changed or you know this is dumb etc uh, etc et um until we were both happy with it 
Um, and then I just went straight into inking it. And then after I inked all the pages, I scanned everything, coloured it digitally, added the letters digitally, sent it off to the publisher and they were like, you did it, here's a book. Where's the next one? Um, what do you love most about comics as a medium? Um, I love that I can do everything myself. Um, I'm the kind of, I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm a control freak, but there are things that like I, um, I love putting myself into my work and with comics I can do that and I can do everything. It's like being able to make your own film or something, but you can do everything yourself and I just, I love that. I love the level of control that I can have, um, you know, being kind of authentic to, to myself and what I want to say. Um, and just how I can, like, I, I, I think about this a lot, it's like, if I was like a skilled programmer and stuff, would I prefer to make video games? Possibly, but I can't, um, so comic is my mode of transport, you know? That's probably not, like, that's not the, like, the cool, like, arty answer you wanted, but it's, it's the truth, so. Um, a lot of people ask how you develop your own style. This is a question that I've like always found quite bizarre. Um, ever since I was a kid, I found this question like quite bizarre because I don't think any artist who has a particular style or whatever like wakes up and is like go to find my style. Like the <laughs> the style chooses the wizard. <laughs> like I don't, it just um, it just happens. I think I think like with me, my personal like art journey. I obviously take in influences, like as everybody does, um, and I just drew a lot. Like, that's the thing about being an artist, is I think people don't realize how many shit drawings you left behind you. So like, to get to like, a mediocre level of art, you have to draw like, a thousand drawings, right? Um, and so like eventually you're going to kind of find yourself and like you're going to draw something once and it's going to be shit and you don't really like it but you think oh maybe if i drew that with the eyes from the guy who drew this then it would look cool and then you do that and you're like it's getting like I, there's progress there uh, maybe if i did this and like eventually a thousand drawings later you draw the, the drawing that you did like it's going to be like the same subject but it's going to be completely unrecognizable and it's going to be like you learning and like even without even consciously knowing that you're doing it, you are, um, and you're developing your own style. I don't really like that word, your own style, what is my style, I don't know. I just, I draw what's in my head, and my hand is like, we're gonna do it like this. Um, how to get involved with projects with others? Ask them. It's really that simple, I promise you. Just ask them. The worst that they can say is, no you know um and like most of the time like i most experience i've had with like asking people to do a project they're like oh cool yeah that sounds, that sounds like a good idea and sometimes then you they don't follow up and but it's fine it happens um so yeah just ask like for example my overwatch variant cover that i did i only got that job because i posted on twitter like <laughs> Kind of embarrassing. It was like a photo, it was like photos of like a bunch of like Overwatch merch that I own and like some of my like time in game or something. And I was like, listen, I make comics and I want to do this Overwatch color so bad. Like, can you guys retweet until somebody sees it? And then people retweeted it. And then I got a DM from one of the editors that was like, yes, you can. Was it a little bit embarrassing and cringe for me? Yes. Did I get a job out of the end of it? Yes. And now I have an Overwatch variant cover. So. You know, be ballsy. Be ballsy. Um, when and how did you become interested in writing and drawing comic books? I think when I was around 12, I decided that that's what I wanted to do. It was, I was really obsessed with Pokemon as a kid and um, my dad had bought me the Pokemon manga for Christmas and it was like, it was, it was terrible, but I loved it. I thought it was great. And um, then uh, I went straight to Death Note from Pokemon. Interesting jump. But then I read Death Note and I was like, wow, okay, this is cool. Like Death Note was fucking cool. Um, 
and I think it really showcased to me how much comics can do um, and I never really cared for like comics before then like I, in my mind it was just like superhero stuff which I have never really cared for um, but yeah I just kind of like I fell in love with it uh, I fell in love with the medium I like and I started collecting like mostly manga I only got really into comics in my late teens um, but like manga I've been collecting since I was like 12 and I was really obsessed with like um, I mean I, I mostly loved horror um, and kind of like more realistic more realistically draw manga um, yeah um, what's the best drawing you've ever done? all of them they're all amazing <laughs> that's not true but um, I don't think I have a favourite maybe I will if I if I'm editing this and I remember, remember Zoe, do it. Um, I'll include some some images of some of my favorites that I've done. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite. Like with art, like I don't. It's more for me, like drawing is like I love the process. I don't tend to often draw something just because like I want the final image. It's more like I just I love to draw. I love like the act of drawing. Um, but yeah. Favorite. Um, any art books you used to have as a kid? I don't think I had well I mean yeah like I got into really really into manga when I was like 12 I think what inspired me the most to draw though um, was before that my my dad if my dad's watching this he'll love that I'm saying this um, my dad got me really into video games um, when I was way too young father way too young should not have been playing mafia when I was seven <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that got me really into video games and stuff like uh, Bioshock, um, Borderlands, um, Fallout, um, these kind of, you know, these really fun, violent games. <laughs> but like, I loved it. I loved just how innovative everything was and how just, it just you fill me with so much curiosity like especially stuff like fallout and bioshock with like the worlds and the, the the creature designs and just it really you know i think video games will always be kind of my kind of starting point where inspiration hit me like um yeah they really mean they mean a lot to me so i think i didn't really have an art books but i had a dad who liked playing video games so um, would you ever do an art book short answer yes um yes i would and i have been planning one um although i don't want it to be like an art book that's just kind of like art that I've posted online that I've then printed in a book with like nothing added to it. I've been thinking about doing something a bit cheesy and profound. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to have a think about it. Um, I, I wanted to do like, I do like little diary comics that kind of litter my entire, my entire flat just full with piece of paper with like little scribbles on. And some of them are, some of them I think are very insightful. Some of them, most of them are really shit. Um, but I don't know, I would love to do something with all of those, but then also kind of like my more like illustrative art that I just do for fun and like somehow combine that into a project slash art book thing. Okay. I will try my best. Um, what are your next projects? Um, okay, so I have a secret, secret project, a secret project, um, and a secret project. Um, one of them is with a writer who is, is very cool and um, it will hopefully be announced in a month or so and then I can talk about it, stop calling it this DUDE I KNOW YOU'RE EXCITED BUT I CAN'T TALK ABOUT IT YET I'll get to talk more Jeez <laughs> Yeah, one of the, yeah um, so hopefully I can talk about that one soon um, My other project is um, I Think I Might Be Evil which I, I know it's great isn't it? Um, yeah, I think I might be evil, um, which is my next solo project, um, which I will talk about more in, probably like in a year or so. It's very early in like development and stuff. Um, and then I have some like little things, little other things, little exciting things. Um, but yeah, that's like the main thing I'm gonna do because like, I feel like I've kind of gone on, gone on forever and not really said anything. Um, <laughs> I might, I might try and do another one of these at some point. Um, there was a lot of questions I didn't get to and some that I feel like I'm not really qualified to answer. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, what pens do you use? I can't 
classic. We have to end on a classic. What pens do I use? At the moment, I'm obsessed with, well, I'm not obsessed with these, but I'm trying to use some G pens. I usually use um, Maru nibs, uh, which are these ones. Um, but I've been trying to, I've been trying to branch out to a, to a G pen because that's like the adult version, the grown up version. Um, so I'm using those at the moment with, with ink. Um, I love them because you, they're the only pens that you can really get like a strong line with. You know what I mean? Just a, a strong beefy line that even when you erase it, it doesn't like, you know, disappear a bit. Um, the other ones I use are... Uh, I use Pilot GPEX a lot. And I don't even. Hello? Ah. The, these. I use these a lot. Um, they're pretty disgusting pens, actually. I, I drew Billy with these, and when, I remember in interviews, I was always like, I'm never going to use these pens again. Here I am, uh, still using them. They're disgusting to draw with, but somehow, like, I draw really fast with them. Like, they're very, like, hard to control and very, like, wonky lines, but I don't know, they're cheap and they do the job and they kind of force you to draw fast, I think. Um, yeah, there's my pens. Okay, well, that's, that's all the questions I'm gonna answer today. Um, I hope that was somewhat informative and if not entertaining and if not time-killing. Um, thank you everybody who asked the question. Um, and will I be using this YouTube channel more? Yes. I am hoping that once I'm like, uh, once I'm done with the secret project and like once I started working on like evil or whatever other stuff I'm doing, I would love to start live streaming. Um, I'm, a very, I'm a very lonely and isolated person and live streaming makes me feel something. Um, so I would love to do it like more kind of professionally, um, I guess. And um, so, yeah, stick around if you want content, and if not, go away. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Sorry that was really awkward and painful. Bye! <laughs>